the meeting of a lot of commissioners is being held tonight, Thursday, October 19, 2023. The meeting is being recorded. Chairman Ed Johnson present. Commissioner Dave Mesler present. Commissioner John Kane present. Rainy Brown, DPW Director present. Kristen Marriott, DPW Officer. Okay. Is there any public comment? Is there any public comment? No. Okay. Seeing none, have you reviewed the minutes of the September 7th meeting, Dave and John? I reviewed the minutes and I make a motion to accept them as written. And there's a second. I'll make a second. Okay, all in favor, Ed Johnson, aye. Dave Mesler, aye. John Kane, aye. Okay, we accept that. Okay. Okay, we got seven elderly rate applications. They all meet the requirements. And a motion on the floor for that, please. I make a motion to accept the elderly rate applications. Second. Second motion. Okay, Red Johnson, aye. Dave Mesler, aye. John Kane, aye. Okay, elderly rate passes. Randy, EPW report. Okay, a few things. Uh, first of all, we did our annual shutoff process for the month of September for those accounts that were uh, delinquent in payment. We had uh, placed a total of 51 door knockers on properties that gave them 24 hours in the payment. Uh, ultimately, 10 of those did not make payment and were shut off. And of those, three are still in payment. Okay. That's not about that bad average. Um, yeah. Uh, water bills for the April 1 to October 1 billing period were issued last Friday, the 13th, and they are due on November 14th. And the commitment for this bill cycle totaled just over $1 million. So we have, first time we tracked a million dollars in commitment. So. And let's see, item three, we had a water break on Hudson Drive on October 6th. Uh, there's a construction there of a new warehouse facility. Contractor was working in the road and uh, it gave damage our water lines. So oh, for Wally Computers building there. Yep. Yes, yes. Um, so we accrued, that was a Friday afternoon when this happened. Uh, our crews were there and uh, we helped them make repairs. And we did send a bill to the property owner for damages to cover, cover our costs and materials for the repairs. Uh, we have a town wide leak protection. Uh, plan for actually, I talked to the contractor yesterday. He's going to start, I think, the second week of November. Um, so, we do this every three years, part of our uh, 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 mass DEP permit, withdrawal permit. Um, so, we do a, a town wide survey looking for new EP systems. So, we'll report back on that once we get once that happens next month. And the last item here is our back inspector, Jeffy Lavelli, is continuing the inspections. He did uh, a handful in October. And he still has a few more to go before any of the town meeting. Work order summary. Uh, that it's in your folder there. Yeah, a lot of them are just water shut yep. offs, you know, uh, seasonals. Yeah. Yep. Um, Miscellaneous service. Meter. Do we still got some old meters out there? I'm sorry. Do we still have old meters out there? Or we. I don't know. Uh, I think there's one. One. There's there's a there's a handful, and most of them the properties are off. There is one that's a farm that um we're working on discussing with the property owner what they to try to figure out what they're going to do with it. So, okay. Uh, if they want to replace the generation. Okay. Okay. Work order appointments. No. Old business. Any Randy? Nothing for me in our old business. John or Dave? No, I'm good. No. Okay, new business. Multiple unit billing. So um, over the past uh, couple of meetings, the select board has uh, modified their uh, rate structure for sewer. And uh, Diane actually was involved in that process and myself. And so as we were looking through our accounts through that process, we identified some residential and some commercial properties um, that were billed in a little different manner. And so when looking at it from the sewer rate standpoint, um, we wanted to make sure those are streamlined. And we thought, I thought it'd be worthwhile to discuss these with you um, because there's some, some with the new sewer rates, there's some nuances with the sewer versus the water. And I think it'd be helpful to have everything consistent on the same playing field. So I got, there's two pages here. 
um, we're looking at, first of all, we're calling them multi-unit, uh, residential multi-unit buildings. So these are all of our apartment complexes. Um, and there are six of them in here that are on sewer, five of them, I'm sorry, six on water, five of them are on sewer. Uh, but Captain Fowler, um, 5A, 5B, South Long Island Road, Cedar Street Apartments, Lakewood Village, College Highway Apartments, um, so Southern and the College Highway, right. uh, Aaron Circle, and Depot Court. So that's actually it's seven, right? Four, five, right. Seven. So, so um, the way this break sheet set up, so some some of these actually actually all, almost all of these were had a minimum bill attached to them. So on this table here, so if you look at Captain Fowler Apartments, it has the address, and then in parentheses is number twelve. So for that one, so Captain Fowler have these four services. And each of these services had a minimum bill attached to it um, based on a minimum number of units. So in, in that these cases, it was 12, 5, 12, and 12. So what we're doing on the uh, sewer side is we are capping all of these apartment complexes at the tier two rate. So sewer adopted a tier tier one, tier two, tier three structure at their own dollar values. And what they're doing is they're capping all these apartments at the tier two rate. So most of these were built uh, with a minimum bill in mind, um, but at a higher unit than probably what they're actually using. So for these anyways, I wanted to, we did a little comparison, What looked at what they were billed this past bill cycle. And if they were billed at that, at this cap, that tier two rate on this bill cycle, what the, what the change in that bill would be. So the last column here shows a fifty percent increase or decrease. And overall, there was a you know, say a small decrease in the bills, but just because of the way some of the usage was for some of the buildings, some of the some of the um, bills went up a little bit, and some of them went down a little bit. Yeah. But the overall, there was a, a decrease of well, about it looks like about nine or ten percent below the, the very bottom. So there are two exceptions. Uh, well, actually, there are one exception. So Depot Court, the, the bottom box here, they are they were currently billed at the lowest rate as they would be under an elderly rate because that's what they you know they Depot was really elderly, so they were basically getting the elderly rate throughout. So theirs did not change at this. Um, so I just have a question because last at the last meeting we had a um, elderly rate application from a renter, right? And because the renter wasn't the property owner, they weren't eligible for the elder, elderly rate. But Aaron Circle is um, housing authority, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not, that, would they be eligible for the elderly rate even though the elderly are not owners? Well, I'm I guess for, you know, consistency across the. Yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, on the sewer side, they, they adopted that for those. For that, that okay. Yeah. And the thought process behind the, the capping at tier two was these are typically lower income facilities, um, giving a little bit of relief to those to those properties with the expectation that if there's an increase in the water sewer bill, it's going to get passed along to the ultimately to the tenants. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why there was a, a cap on the tier two for these facilities. How come <clears throat> how come South Long Island is 80% reduction? But it's only using a very small amount of water, it seems. Yeah. So again, they had the minimum bill. So because so oh, building okay. A has yeah, five yeah. units, it was getting basically five times the minimum. Yeah. And then nine times the minimum. I'm not sure if that those units are actually at capacity. I don't know. I, I drive by it. It doesn't look that busy. I wouldn't expect there to be 14 units there. Yeah. I but know. but it, when if you go to this process, it you know if you're looking at the actual usage, yeah, it's there's a quite a big drop there. Right. Yeah. So that was, and then actually, so Air and Circle is, I would say, similar to Depot Core in the fact that it's, you know, elderly housing. Right. So we there is an option there as well um, if you wanted to adopt the elderly for Air and Circle um, in addition to Depot Core. So the very bottom column in the box, Air and Circle, says elderly rate, that, that lowest row, um, the minus 13.65%, that would be if the elderly rate was adopted this past bill cycle. And these only have one meter, correct, per line item here. 
Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like so a, cap is power like four. The, yeah. Exactly. Right. Meter yeah. replacement and stuff. We're not replacing twelve meters. It's just that one. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that minimum times five, we really don't need to charge that because we're not going to be looking to replace five meters or twelve meters. Just one meter down the road. For that South Long Road, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Got it. Yep. So these are the residential units. Um, I don't have any questions on that. No, we can talk about the commercial ones as well. So this this is basically the um, the, the strip malls or the you know the, the plazas we have in town. There's uh, it's like there's nine of them on the west side of the water system. So all of these, with the exception of Grisso Plaza, was built the same way um, for water, which is basically based on their actual usage with no cap, right? But Grisso Plaza, for whatever reason, when it was set up, it had uh, 10 units associated with it. So it got 10 times the minimum bill. And uh, they really never hit that number. Even though even though there are probably more than 10 units in Grissom Plaza, they never hit that number. So again, if we go up the same exercise, this is what's going to happen on the, on the sewer side. If we go up the same exercise, and in this case, we'd only be looking to change Grissom Plaza to an basically actual build, actual usage amount their bill will go down by about 12%. In this case, it would be $195 for the last road period. So I think it would be, it'd be helpful to have all these um, facilities, you know, properties built in the same manner. So when we looked at this, it was, this, this was, came to a light when we were going through this process the last couple of weeks. So I figured it'd be worthwhile to discuss it with you, uh, get your take on it, and if, if you wanted to make any adjustments to how these um, properties were, were built. I think it's looks good to me. <clears throat> I know they already did it for the sewer, but is there going to be an issue further down the road with people who are using water that they're going to claim isn't going to the sewer if we start adding caps and different rules throughout? I don't know if that's going to be, it might not be an issue, I'm just thinking. So right now it's build water in bottom floor out. So there's yeah. 100% in, 100% out. That's right. how the building cycle is. There have been people who have tried to ask for abatements or credits on their bills that they, you know, justify there was not going to the sewer. Um, I'd say most cases those were denied mm -hmm. unless if there was a water break, right. right? And we could show the water didn't actually go down the drain. It was, you know, leaked outside or whatever reason. There was those situations. You know, we first the water commissioners would approve an abatement. Right, and then that would get transferred over to the sewer. Okay, so if you're using more water, just be ready to to pay for it both ways. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would. Yeah, to help reduce the waste. Yeah. Yeah, and you came up with a policy if they wanted to have a separate meter for irrigation or water that doesn't go down the sewer. Yeah, there's a policy that's been on the books for probably eight years now. Yeah, um, yeah it's been probably 10 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's available for those. If you have a big irrigation use and it's, you know, yeah. you can certainly go down that route and have a water only zone. Right, right. Or you know, water, water only meter, I should say. Right. Yeah. Any questions on this? I, I, yeah. I, I think I would recommend going, you know, making these changes. I think it, it's it's more consistency um, more than anything else, um, especially within the within the types of units here, like the apartments, have them all build within the same type of building structure, the same as well as ours, as well as the uh, the plazas as well. Is this something that we would offer to other multi-unit owners and you know future buildings down the road that we would? So I think the sewer commissioners are, are looking at units that are this size, like like 10 units or, or greater. Okay. So okay. for residential use only. So I guess we would probably, we should, if we're going to do that, we need to set a unit level that meets that cap, you know? Yep. So of all these, the There's smallest one, one is, more. the smallest one, I, well, South Long, so I would look at the, the whole property as one. So South Long Air okay. Road has yeah. uh, 14 units total. Okay. So I think the sewer commissioners were, were thinking along the lines of somewhere around 10 units as like a, as a minimum size. Okay. So yeah. all these would qualify for that. 
you know, certainly this is this is not intended to be uh, used for you know two family, three family, right. four family right. homes. That that would not qualify for this. Yeah, ten or more. That ten, ten, ten seems to be a you know like a good number that that fits with all these that we're talking about here. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, do you know the verbiage that the sewer commission used? So, so actually, they match, so we can, you know, if we're looking for consistency that we can match our policy. So they haven't, haven't, they haven't officially adopted it yet. So at the last meeting on Monday, they adopted the rate structure and they weren't sure how they could adopt these um, policies for billing, these billing policies. So I think at the next meeting, they're going to probably vote okay. on this. But discussions I had with Diane and others that um, you know, we spoke talked about here today. Yeah, so if we may have to give our consent to adopt a or yeah, to we'll structure a policy yeah. and then review it afterwards. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, same, well, same, same page. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. So we can do that. All right, so I'll make a motion to, you know, give the sewer commission the uh, authority to build a policy for us to review afterwards to make it congruent like we talked about with Randy. A second. I second. All in favor of Johnson, aye. Steve Miswood, aye. John Kane, aye. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Anything else on a new business, Randy? I don't have anything. John or Dave? No. I have a motion for adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second motion to adjourn. Okay, Johnson, aye. Steve Miswood, aye. John Kane, aye. Meeting adjourned. 16 minutes, not bad.